Um, thanks for coming to my workshop. Um, I've decided to just do a, get, a quick get out where I've just called it a reverie. So what I'm doing with you, just because we've only got about half an hour, um, I'm just going to keep it like um, a daydream. Is that all right? So just, I know it might have been some moments today have been wonderful, beautiful, intense. I don't know. For now, this is just really nice. Is that okay? So will you take my hand and let's take a tiptoe through the tulips <laughs> of education. Is that all right? Is that all right? This is the tone of it. All right? Is that okay? Um, I'm conscious of the fact that some of you may have uh, had me come into your school or I've worked alongside you. So some of the things I'll say, I may have said before, but part of me, I, I don't really mind that because my themes are consistent. That's, that's all right as well. That's another, write that down. That's a great right way of getting out of stuff. Um, I've labelled myself up as a, as a travelling teacher because uh, I still teach, uh, but I travel around and I do it. And then last week I was in uh, Wales and I was with year one and it was all kicking off with, um, with Jack and Beanstalk. <laughs> Can't go into it now. It was too hectic, but... There was a polar bear rocked up at one point. We didn't know what was going on. Um, can you just have a chat with... The, you might not know the person next to you. This isn't a getting to know you thing. If you're, if you're stuck between two people you're not sure, just pick, pick your favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely base it on looks. Uh, be shallow. Um, can you just... I just want you very quickly... Let's say, right, let's say... Let's say there's um, a fifth season. There is, I know they're in, right? But let's say there is. <coughs> what is it? What's it called? What happens? Is everyone safe? What does Morrison stock prior to the onslaught of the fifth season? Can you have a quick chat about that, please? Invent the season. <laughs> 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 right, so, so, fifth season, so I asked that, hey, all your answers were great. <laughs> this is what some children said to me in a, in a behaviour setting. They said, uh, we've got one, and it's like, go on then. And this kid went, Spratum. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Spratum. And I went, that is brilliant. <laughs> what happens in Spartan? I asked the table. And they're all going, there's no gravity. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're writing this down, because this is, this is gold. There's no gravity. And I went, that's brilliant. What do we need to be mindful of before that season arrives then? And there's a little boy on the table. He's not said, or he's just looking at me going, <laughs> and I said, are you, are you okay? And he went, I'm worried about me, Nan. -nan. <laughs> and I said, well, what's up? He, he said, she's in her wheelchair. I'm worried she's going to float away. <laughs> and his mate went, don't worry, don't worry, Tyler. We'll bolt her down. <laughs> Let's say there's a fifth season. They came up once he'd said Sprotum, and I know you've already done this in the head, there was Sprint, uh, you know, there was Wing! <laughs> but what, what it was, was indu it's an, an inductive question, isn't it? It's a big question, it's a fat question, and it's just saying, what, sh what are we thinking? Our role then, or my role in that position, is just to say, right, where's the value? Because it's nice. But where, what am I drilling down to? And what am I digging down to? Um, just something, if you, if you are, I, I don't know if I'm going to say anything worth writing down, but <laughs> something I do say to children, and this is, this, I started doing this with Key Stage 4 when I taught literature. It was, instead of saying, oh, just, 
just pretend that we're in Dust Bowl America. <laughs> Instead of saying that, I'd say, let's say, let's say we're, we're in Dust Bowl. Let's say Atticus Finch is sat on that chair. Get a sticky note and just write Atticus Finch and put it on that chair over there. Let's say he's here. He's lost the case. And he's there. So, lads, bottom set, Barnsley, 2002. What are we going to say to him to cheer him up? What are we going to say to reassure him? How can we give him hope? And that was just, that's negotiating the text at that time, English literature. Let's say it's a lovely invitational thing to say to children. So I'm just going to report back some stuff I found out. And um, that's me in early years. I don't know if you can quite see that. Can you, can you see that? Wow, that's my favourite picture. <laughs> early years. Chuffy now, they don't mess about down in early years, do they? Flipping it. They, they mess with your laces. Put their hands in your socks. Grab your legs. Don't know anything about personal space, and then they take you to the classroom and introduce you to the <laughs> <laughs> So, Billy, Billy's a kid, Billy's the kid, Billy the kid, whose name I learned within about 4.3 seconds, you know. <laughs> Billy, Billy. They've been to a farm, this is a school in Leeds, they've been to a working farm, and they've had a great time, and they came back, they were telling me about it, and I said, okay, so, and they're all sitting down, and I said, if, if you were to think about the farm yesterday, now I'm a secondary teacher, so I'm, I've got my face pressed against the edge of my comfort zone with all this. So if, we were, if you think back to yesterday, <laughs> and I start doing that, I found if we nod enough at the little ones, they nod back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say we have a time machine. And they're all going, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we had a wound, I heard you had a great time at the farm yesterday, so what did you see? And straight away the hands are going up. And it was great because the answer, and I asked Billy, I said, Billy, what did you see? And he went, it was a rape mess. <laughs> right, what else did we see? And he went, oh, again, it was a repeater. Did you have repeater kids? They give you one, but they're straight back with another. <laughs> Bog off. <laughs> and I said, go on, what is it? And he said, he said, a farm shop. And I'm not kidding, a lot of the hands in the room just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they were all buzzing about the farm shop, but they did say it was quite messy. And I said, well, what if, let's say the farmer wants help with his farm. He wants help times. You know, what jobs shall we do for him? So that's the kids there thinking about the jobs. And just for that hour, when I am honestly working my socks off, um, is my evidence just for a bit, just for a bit. It'll be me evidence. Uh, that's the other thing I found out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> me and you were all right, uh, aren't we? Yeah, fine. <laughs> botheredness. We all know what that means, don't we? Botheredness. I don't need to explain that because it's not a word, uh, but we all know what it is. And it's how do we build that with our children? How do you get kids who perhaps haven't got a bed to actually care about the Stone Age? for instance. That's the challenge for the teachers, for all of you, and that's some things that we heard about this morning. How do we get them to care? How can we help children go beyond engagement? Oh, engagement, what a word that we get beaten up by. Engagement. What about investment? How do we get kids to invest in the work that we're doing? I haven't got time to go into it all now, but I'm going to have a go. I'm going to have a go. My background's Barnsley um, in South Yorkshire. I do a lot of work still there working in behaviour settings and uh, working with um, vulnerable children, some angry children, but also in mainstream and so on. So I'm just using that work to inform what I'm speaking to you about now. Um, thanks for laughing, actually. I'm not finished, but I think laughing's right good, isn't it? <laughs> just make, well, it makes me relax a little bit. Uh, that's a twilight I did. <laughs> <laughs> in Stockport. Just have a read of them. <laughs> Any, anyway, Dylan, let's go on a bear hunt. <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm wondering all the t as I'm visiting schools and working alongside <laughs> staff. I work with staff and we work together with their children. It's like CPD on steroids. I'm, le I'm learning, they're learning, we're all learning. Um, there's a lot of surface learning going on in schools. It's, there's that, I've seen it grow since I've been a travelling teacher since about 2009. And I've seen this grow where the, the word fear was used this morning. And it's that idea that actually everything's got narrower and narrower. Now, I'm, I'm, I get labelled up like, oh, he's, he's a creative teacher, right? Well, no, actually, I'm just trying to make it interesting. Because I, I could actually make it easy for myself and give them a worksheet, for example, and just save myself the hassle. I could spend Sunday without, you know, seeing my family and make a beautiful resource that the kids aren't going to be that bothered about. Or what I can actually do is think about how we can bring it to life together in the classroom. There's a lot of surface stuff, and I'm wondering what's happening underneath. And you're here today because you're bothered about that. You're, you've, you chose to come on a Saturday because you're bothered about what's happening underneath. If we're talking about what's happening underneath, we're talking about pedagogy. And that's what we should, that's, those are the discussions we should be having. Um, the defensive pedagogy, I, I, I just tell the story very quickly. Think of a really lovely class. You're taking them into a lovely classroom. And in the corner of that classroom um, is a drum kit. It's a brand new nine grand drum kit. And all the kids see that drum kit and you see them going towards it and then you tell them to sit at their desks and draw it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I think that's the survival defensive pedagogy that I'm talking about. It makes, <laughs> just makes you want to top your send, doesn't it, really? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I know that's, just read that, please. I know you get drawn, it's a mistake, that slide, that I put that on there. But what, what are, you've, you've come today as well, something drew you here today on a Saturday when you should be doing other things. And it's a beautiful day. And some people will think you're bonkers for coming here today, but something's brought you here. And it might be because you just need something reaffirming. And um, I've got about 20 minutes to help with that, I think. Um, can you just, again, now you've made friends with that person next to you, maybe regretted it. Let's, um, <laughs> um, do, right, this is, this is year four, but it has been year nine. It's just, I've just adapted it. It was year nine a long time ago. <coughs> do you know that old factory? Do you know that old factory at the end of tap? Do you know at the end, everyone knows that old factory. Do you know the funny thing about that factory is no one remembers what it made. But it's there, like a, it's like a blot on the landscape. It's just there. Good news, they're knocking it down. The council are knocking it down next week. And we have been asked, as we always are in this, because this is what we do, we've been asked to go in, and we've just been asked to see if there is anything worth bringing out and saving before it's all demolished. So, if we're going to do that job, what do we need to take with us? Create a little tribe now, a little group, and talk about what do we need to take in there to do that job for the council. got his hand up, I am not putting my hand up. <laughs> Great, so, um, the kids, their first response when I go around the room, I, if I had a different space, we would have been doing this, so be, be grateful, right? So I, I just said, uh, so what are you taking in? And this kid said, um, <laughs> this kid, as many kids will say, he just says, snacks. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, what, what, what snacks? And he said, pepperami. <laughs> And a Red Bull. And it's like, right, okay, we're going to take snacks. 
what else? And what else should we, should we take him with? What else should we take him with us? I ask. I'm just harvesting ideas. And I did this in um, in Aberdeen, and this kid went <laughs> proper hard little kid went. Um, who's it? <laughs> and I just said, no, we're not taking any guns because one of the values of our school, our school is kindness. I've seen it. But we don't have guns. And he went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else? We'll take a wheelbarrow. <laughs> okay, right, yeah, that's more like it. Don't need guns, do we? <laughs> so, you get the drift. And I'm sure, because some of you did that really seriously, and I, I'm really grateful. So thank you for saying uh, health and safety checklist. <laughs> Thanks for saying risk assessment and hard hat. And the right shoes, you know. <laughs> all I'm doing with that, all I've done there, haven't I? I've just given them something to chew over. Now actually, my topic's Victorian. That's my topic. But we're starting, we're going to go in there, and what's going to happen, to cut a long story short, is we go in, and then we find something sacred. We find something beautiful. We find something special that means the building needs to be saved. And by the time the children have immersed themselves in the interior of that, we make floor plans, we flash our torches, and where the torchlight falls, we put a post-it note up and we write down a description of what the light falls on. The portrait of the owner in 1922, etc. We just do that. We've got all that there. And then maybe at some point we'll mount a protest because it's unjust that this building is going to be torn down. And the kids have got a reason. Because I know we're all thinking of... Where, where does this go? But it'll go to their books because they will write powerfully, more powerfully, because they're invested in. Is that okay? I'm going to skip it on because I've got no time. And this is my introduction still. <laughs> so, uh, you can't, you can't be good, can you? So, where's the curriculum? I just said Victorians. But where is it? It's child labour in Key Stage 3, potentially. And we'll start with those Victorian children. Uh, but we, we may just <coughs> fast forward to China and the creation of mobile phones and stuff like that. Uh, let me show you that. That's a little boy in, in Barnsley called Max. He's in special school. And he's sitting there and he's thinking about a job because he's been asked this. The project he's been doing with his class is circus. And they are all circused up and they're buzzing with circus. And I go in and they all start singing a circus song. Can you sing it? You're singing it in your head. Da, 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 da. I walk in, they all just start bounding it out and I'm slightly overwhelmed. Uh, there is a TA and I, I keep looking at this TA because he looks like an extra from Game of Thrones. <laughs> and I, I keep doing that but I know where I am. I'm in the circus with someone from Game of Thrones. So, I've, asked, I've, asked Max, I've asked Max's table, I've asked the whole class this question, um, if we're going to run a circus, what jobs need doing? So again, repeat the process. Look, if we're going to run, and I don't mean some two-bit circus. This circus is mint. It's bob on. So let's have a proper circus. And some of you, if you're in a leadership role, you can look at all of these jobs as a metaphor for leadership. All right? So the, can you just tell the person next to you what jobs need doing in a really great circus? Very quickly. Very quickly. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. That's ineffectual, isn't it? That? I went to university. I've got my exams. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like they're sucking a lemon. Yeah, that's what. So, what jobs have we got? Shit shuffler. Leadership. <laughs> There speaks a leader. <laughs> what else? Clown. Cla 
A clown, trapeze artist. Look at. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. It's suddenly got controversial. And are we all right? Are we all all right having animals? Depends which kind. Stupid ones. Small domestic. We're going to have hamsters in this. Any of the more jobs? Candy floss. Oh, we're all getting up now, aren't we? Candy floss. Candy floss. Yeah, candy floss. What? Ringmaster. A ringmaster. Website is not <laughs> well, well, that one of them in. Yeah, IT is important, right? <laughs> IT is important. Sorry? I know why you wanted to say that. A tent, a tent erector and, yeah, and all that business. Risk assessments. <laughs> the, can I show you what the kids came up with? And I'm sharing this with you. And we're having fun. We're having a laugh, if that's okay with you. And then, it's, I, I, I love this. And I'm just going to play back what happened in the lesson. So this awful thing happened to me where I grabbed, they've written it down on a sheet and I grabbed it, but I fell into that teacher trap of not looking at the sheet. <laughs> We've all done it, you know, and you go, stick it up and you go, hey, you've come up with loads of ideas, haven't you? <laughs> Check them out. Check them out. Now, you can't quite see them, but the first one is bubble. <laughs> And then as a teacher, I'm like, oh no! <laughs> Game of Thrones is looking at me like going. <laughs> <laughs> Basically saying, I could have written this. <laughs> so I say to the kids, and it's me, I am just totally the learner here. I say, go on, Bubble, that's really interesting. Why have you written that? Is that a job? <laughs> and he said, he, this kid absolutely just went. No, it's the name of the circus. <laughs> he didn't quite manage, you idiot. You know, it's the name of the circus. And I said, why is it called that? And he said, there's bubbles everywhere. And I said, what happens when they pop? Bit of tension. He said, he said, we just get marble. <laughs> and I said, can you get in a bubble and ride around in it? And he looked at me and I thought, oh no, because something changed. Suddenly the atmosphere changed. I'm like, Oh no. Do you know when you think you've said something that you shouldn't have said? And he stood up and kicked his chair and I'm thinking, oh no. And he just looked at me and he went, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and went. <laughs> and I'm looking at Game of Thrones. I... <laughs> and, and he just went, he just went like this. Great. He just went, he's gone to design it. <laughs> And I, I mean, for me, I was just thinking, yeah, right, yeah, go and, yeah, go and design the thing that you fly around with over the top of the city. And there it is, there, that elasticity at the sides of the lesson where we can just push a little bit and maybe just feel it and put ourselves in charge for a minute of what's happening. Yes, you can. So that's where he went. Um, the second thing there was make sure there's rides. And I said, what like? And this kid said, a train. I went, a ghost train? He went, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I had nothing to say. I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, music, party food, candy floss, I'm sure. Um, animals. So your lot would be happy. <laughs> animals. And this little lovely girl, little girl called Bethany wrote that. Beautiful writing, she wrote animals, and the teacher said she loves horses and she knows loads about horses. So I said, would you, Bethany, would you be in charge of our one animal, which is a zebra? Can you be in charge of our zebra? And she was like, oh, and she's sitting up in a chair. And, she, and I said, what are you going to call, what should we call the zebra? Because he needs a name. And she looked at Game of Thrones and looked back at me and went, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> He was Nigel, wasn't he? Dance music, makeup for the clowns. And finally, from a little autistic boy, he said, magic. And I said, where do we get that from? And he said, it'll just turn up. Aww. So, and I said, nothing. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> um, you can't quite see on here. Uh, the kids are in. I gave them all a mini roundabout. Can you see it's a template? I'll email it to you. <coughs> <laughs> so 
Millie Roundabout. Um, used to use this in geography. And when we used to, we used to run a humanities thing, Key Stage C, and uh, we'd use this as just doing about urban stuff, uh, urban curriculum, you know. So they, they all got a mini roundabout. They populated it with stuff, and we, you know, I said to them, "What, what, what will we find in a, in a town? What places?" And they went, "Greg's." <laughs> and then, one kid said, "A bookies." <laughs> <laughs> and they all went to playtime and when they came back I'd got all the sheets and just put them together on the floor and made the town and when they, they came in they had, um, they had that thing that we can give our children we can give it them every week which is original awareness where they walk in and they see something that they're not prepared for or they, just haven't, they weren't expecting it it's not a trick it's not a tip it's not a hint it's just powerful and it's useful and has value. And I know that because I use it a lot. Just I call it, it's drama, it's mapping. Make a map. We could have done the floor plan of the factory. We could have done GPS, we could have done coordinates. We could have done loads of stuff in that factory. They, they come in and they see that on the floor and they're buzzing. I get Bethany, I said, Bethany, we've got some bad news. Nigel's escaped. <laughs> Where will we find him? And little Beth, I actually said to her, you had one job. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Bethany, we need to get searching for Nigel. Not that Nigel, Nigel the zebra. And she went, I know where he'll be. And I said, go on. And she said, on the zebra crossing. <laughs> <laughs> and she was, was Bob on. And did it, what happened with that was, we were moving on to some other serious curriculum. But for that moment, it was just ace, and it was just a nice bit of warmth. The curriculum was warmed up. Bit of banter for learning. Write that down. <laughs> BFL. <laughs> Don't write that down. Get into bother off some folk on Twitter. <laughs> that sort of thing that's ruining education. <laughs> <laughs> Sit at home, keyboard warrior. <laughs> Boom. And so. Actually, what's modelled is questioning. What I've just talked to you, I mean, I've told you an anecdote, a story, and, and, but what's underneath? What's the underneath then? Well, the underneath is, is, uh, is that inductive atmosphere. It is one of warmth. It's one of we're together. It's cooperation. It's I don't want to work with anyone else, but actually he, you can contribute to the jigsaw of learning there. Um, that's me asking that boy questions about the bubbles. I was relentless but I was very kind with it. And I've just reminded myself, I put that little note in yellow at the bottom just before you all came in. We're all in position, but my, I suppose something to take away is where are you positioning yourself? What sort of teacher are you? And you're here, so I've already got in mind to perhaps uh, uh, what kind of teacher you are. You're a teacher who's really bothered about what's going on in class, but you're bothered about the big picture as well. Um, I'm running out of time and there's like 50 million things I wanted to talk about. I may have shared this with some of you before, but I can't resist just to share it one more time if that's okay. So can you just tell the person in front of you or behind you everything you know about Kenya? <laughs> and you're alright if you just want to say it begins with K. <laughs> Thanks, thanks. That, hey, wow, you know loads. You know loads about Kenya. So I went down to Bristol and at the Holiday Inn at the bottom of the station. And I've been asked to go and teach her one the next day. And I get an email at quarter past uh, 10 at night on a Sunday. And the email just says from the year one teacher who's called Miriam, it just says, we are doing Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't help at all. And I'm thinking, oh. I saw Google Kenya, got my credit card ready just in case I got to go on TES Connect and pay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> pay for a one-to-one -one with your teacher. So I'm just thinking, what am I going to do? So I Google Kenya, and the first five hits on Google, which take 0.08 seconds to find, just tell me, and it's not fair on Kenya, but it just tells me how to avoid getting shot or kidnapped. And I'm thinking, I can't do that with year one. Well, at least not first thing, you know. <laughs> So I skip along to Google Images and I find that picture and then everything settles down and I just go to bed and I sleep soundly. Because finding that photo just is my hook. And I think I know what I'm doing now. And as a teacher, as a teacher, uh, you know, we're building experience and repertoire all the time, aren't we? We've, we're constantly adding to what we know. And I look at that picture from what I've learned and thought about and seen all the brilliant stuff I've seen in the last few years. I'm thinking I know what to do with that. I can, I can make something come alive. So I go in with the kids. They all sit down on, I mean, secondary <coughs> colleagues. They all sit on carpet, right? They're shuffling up uncomfortably close. <laughs> You're telling them to back off. I've got all teachers at the back, including Miriam. And I say to them, right, I understand you know a lot about, which I'm not into scripting, you know, scripting the profession, but that's quite a nice one. I understand you know a lot about. It's a good one to use with that boy who don't want to do anything. But you can say, I understand you know a lot about, and insert something that you know about that kid. I understand you know a lot about Kenya. And straight away, they're all shouting facts. And Miriam's at the back, I could see her. She's high-fiving her colleagues. They're all going, Miriam, you have nailed Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> you have done Kenya. And she's going, I know. <laughs> And they're all like telling me stuff. And I say, that's great. Put the picture up and I say, right, let's say, let's, so let's say there's um, two lions in a zoo in Kenya. Yeah, Nairobi. Let's have them in Nairobi. They're, in, they're sitting there. How do we know if they're happy? They're smiling, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? <laughs> a kid says that. A kid down here, do you know one of them stalker kids who follows you about? <laughs> you know the one who follows you going, I like your hair. <laughs> I like your hair. And you say to him, get out of my garden. <laughs> <laughs> They're smiling. That's one, that's one way we could tell if the lions are happy. How else would we know? And this kid says, um, they purr. Now, colleagues, I'll be honest with you, I had a, a professional wobble. Is that, I, I don't know if lions purr or not. I'm, I'm just proper stressing out now because of that. And I'm thinking, uh, do they? Do they? So I just say to him, do they? And he went, he went yes. <laughs> and I said, I said, you know a lot about lions. He went, I do. And I said, That's great. It's great, OK, so they're purring. If you need to know, if you need to know, they don't. <laughs> you need to know. I'll never get that 10 minutes back from, at a conference when someone explained that to me. <laughs> <laughs> and another kid had their hand up. I said, well, go on then, watch it. And, and they said, they wag their tails. I went, that's great. But my cat wags his tail, and I get scratched when that happens. And they just said, cats are different. <laughs> let's, so we've got these two lines. Let's, let's give them names. Let's give them names. We're in this zoo. Let's give them names. There's two of them. And straight away, a boy says thunder. So I, that's bloody great, that, isn't it? I'm like brilliant, and Miriam's like. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> She's like that. And, and, they're all, and then I say thunder and. Th no, I know you know. <laughs> I should have been there in year one. Thunder hand. And I'm there giving it thunder hand. Come on. Yeah. And then secondary colleagues, primary colleagues, some of them fall for this. They do this. They start singing for no reason. And what happened, Miriam just went, come on now, think of the weather. <laughs> How is that helpful? <laughs> Back off. The neck. So I was about to lose hope when this little, lovely little boy who hadn't grown into his glasses yet, he, he had Epiphany Kid, got them, haven't we? The ones who haven't done anything, then they go, oh! Like that. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't heard anything from him. He went, oh! And I went, go on! And he went, Colin! <laughs> so 
we've got two lions in the zoo. <laughs> I've got a degree. <laughs> so, Thunder and Colin, and I went right. <laughs> right, do you want to hear from one of the lions? Do you want to hear one of them speak? And I can't believe this, because I'm, not only am I from the north of England, I've gone and brought a lion. <laughs> So I, I get them all, I say, show me you're listening. And they all do this, I can do, they all do that. Which <laughs> is kind of unsettling. <laughs> right, I'm going to talk as the lion. Now, I first did this again with all the students. I'm going to, I'll talk as, I'll talk as Tibbal. I'll talk as, I'm going to talk as Malvolio. All right. It's not, in the, it's not in the play. This is a bit you don't hear. I'm just going to talk. And this was just a, a resource-saving thing. In drama, we call it teacher in role, but that freaks people out, and they think they've got to go on fancy dress hunts. And, I mean, I've seen someone be Florence Nightingale, coming out of a stock cupboard, fully kitted up. <laughs> doing this. I am the lady of the lamp. Proper giving it all this. And all these kids. All these kids in Darlington or somewhere going. <laughs> Have you any questions for the lady of the lab? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want something to eat? <laughs> just, oh, just madness. I'm going to speak as the lion. Listen up, lean in. Everyone here now in the lecture theatre, lean in. Look. And, and please take this on board now. So um, the kids are there, we're all like that, like that, even teachers. So I'm going to talk as the lion. And what I'm not going to do <laughs> is I'm not going to go, no, I'm a lion. <laughs> right? And the reason I'm not doing that is because they'll love it. And any value it's got is gone. They'll love it, it's fun, and they'll remember it. And those are good things, but there's no value to it. I'm giving them a message. So here we go, ready? I'm just gonna use my normal voice. So it's not acting. So I'm gonna talk as a line, ready? We hate it here. All he does is look at the wall and I look out. The people are kind. They feed us and they look after us. But we remember a different time we remember when we ran, when we could hunt. We remember when we were free and when we had our pride. And a little boy says, we're going to get you out. <laughs> <laughs> Proper interrupting me when I'm right on the road. <laughs> uh, just I mean, colleagues, I'm running out, I've run out of time, but the... The thing is, that boy did want to help. Why? 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 Well, I could show him the picture and say, let's rescue these two lions. They're not bothered. They got bothered in that moment because we named them. They got bothered because they found out a little bit of information. They could actually ask questions if they wanted, but I'd give them time to prepare. Otherwise, it is just, you know, what's your favourite football team? If I just, so, I'll show you that, those are the kids. There's, there's, I don't know if you can make me out there, but that's me doing that with those children. And, and little Colin is there. That's the job, those are some of the jobs that need doing when you're um, setting up a safari park, because that's what they wanted to do. And um, that's, um, so that's just a kid who's happy. Um, <laughs> and that is a map. I've mentioned maps a couple of times, just a map on, on the table. There's a fence going all the way around that they've joined together and they've been figuring out what structures do we have within the line enclosure and what structures do we have outside. And they got bogged down with the gift shop and branding. It was like an episode of The Apprentice. <laughs> and then at the end, they all went and then a, um, a, <laughs> the teacher said, Miriam said, um, that was nice. nice. And uh, um, I'm a bit worried about tomorrow. And I said, why? And she said, we're going to Bristol Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just got this lovely image of all these year ones going, does that llama look depressed to you? <laughs> <laughs> Colleagues, this is what we were going to do. I was going to get quite heavy and deep about pedagogy, but 
Time's gone about ships and refugees and Narnia and Imagineering. And I'll finish with a couple of slides, if you don't mind. I love that. I'll get that laminated and stuck on the wall. Just type in Werner Herzog and you'll find that. Um, teaching, if you're not just actually, if you're not actually just teaching absolutely to the test and offering that survival pedagogy, then some people think like they've got to be like Indiana Jones or like Alan Sugar or some or Richard Branson and start creating loads of brand new stuff. I think actually it's better to be authentic than original. So that, that's just the thought there. Five steps to happiness from an eight-year-old. Don't play. Have an ice lolly. Make friends. Love everything and get a dog. <laughs> and go and teach them the Stone Age. You know, let's, let's bring some of that in. <laughs> <laughs> Not all ideas are good ideas. <laughs> and uh, I like Mrs. Edwards, she's my teacher. I like it when she does meth with us. <laughs> <laughs> Colleagues, um, can I thank you for picking my little workshop? There's so much good stuff. I'm so thrilled and, and humbled that so many people have turned up. And uh, I'm, I, I hope that's just been okay. I overplan and I hope I've delivered enough. Uh, for you to make this workshop work worthwhile. Um, my, uh, my Twitter's up there and my email. If you want to drop me a line, if you're thinking, oh, I wanted to hear some stuff about those pedagogies, I wanted to hear a bit more about the ship and creating a ship and calling it King of the Ocean, and then actually we're on the med, the med and join a cruise, and then we see a different sort of ship full of people who seem to be in distress, and how that went down in a special school, then I, I'd love to share that sort of stuff. But if not, over email, we'll do it again next year, hopefully. So, a big thank you, and then have a brilliant end of the day. Yeah.